So welcome back to Cozy Rosie Crochet and today you are joining me in Newcastle, kind of. So today I'm attending the North East Wool Festival and pointing up because I'm pretty much as far north as I can get in England without going into Scotland. But I'm excited to say that I will be going to Scotland in two days time. I'm a little bit nervous today because I'm hosting two different workshops today and the same two different workshops tomorrow as well. So it's more workshops than I delivered over in the Summer Wool Festival a couple of weeks ago. And I'm excited to see the different stalls that are here. I've seen the attendees list already, so I know the types of stalls that are gonna be here, but I'm excited to see the building because it's in the Newcastle race course and it's using or utilizing the building there. We have a race course near Northampton, it's sadly no longer being used as an event area, um, but the building there is absolutely stunning. So I'm hoping we're gonna get more of the same here so I can showcase. I've been told that there is an outstanding staircase in this building and I'm very excited to see it. It should be from possibly my most favorite era, which is the 1930s. So I'm hoping we're gonna get a good look at that. It is about eight o'clock. I need to be on site, which is kind of over the road and down a little bit by nine. So I need to get moving. And I believe there is a little bakery of sorts around the corner from the hotel because the hotel does not offer breakfast. One of many strange things for me. So I'm going to head over there, get some coffee, get some food, and then head over to site and get set up for my workshops. It's the end of day one at the Newcastle Racecourse and the North East Wall Festival. It's been an absolute pleasure today, it really has. Time absolutely flew. I can't explain where the day has gone. I've just come back from having a lovely meal with the lady that was doing workshops opposite me. Her name is also Fiona, which is quite amusing to me. And it's now chill time, but I do like to process. So I'm gonna process it all with you. My overall feeling is this is an amazing event. I believe it's the first time that it's been held at the North, no North, at the Newcastle race course. I'm gonna put lots of footage in here to show you how beautiful this building was because my mind was absolutely blown. As I mentioned earlier, it was, I knew that there was gonna be quite an impressive staircase that had been mentioned in the directions to where my workshop space is. I hadn't prepared for the chandeliers. What really amused me was that I've had to admit that I had never been to a real race course before. Um, in fact, where I live, there is a park that is called the race course, but the pub on the, near the corner of this park is called the White Elephant because the race course never actually opened. From the top of the kind of posh stand, I think it would be, or the older stand, where you can kind of picture people cheering on the horses as they run around the track and it was really quite an impressive building just as I expected. It was definitely a little bit older than I anticipated that it would be. Just absolutely beautiful grounds, everything about it was lovely. The layout of the halls or the stalls in the hall, absolutely lovely. I still haven't had a chance to look at the second floor. There's two different areas of um, stores to navigate through and have a look at. In the main hall, I caught up with, um, I think her name is Vicky, I might have made that up, from Alley and Threads and managed to pick up myself some yarn. So I'm going to um, cake that when I get home and showcase that to you. I've left everything at the venue because everything, I didn't buy a lot, I promise. But I did buy two things, some yarn from Alley and Yarns, who I'm going to pop in, um, pop her link below for you. Her yarns are all naturally dyed, hand dyed yarns. Absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait to show you this yarn that I've bought from her. And then I did buy something else, but it's a gift for my mum. 
so I'm not going to show you that because she will watch this and I don't want to give it away it'll be her Christmas present probably or I might keep it for myself I can't make my mind up if I keep it I'll show it to you if I don't keep it I won't show it to you so if you don't see it at some point in this video I have give, I will be giving it away when I was talking to the lovely lady from Ali and Yarns I started this woman was walking past the most lovely pink hair and she was walking past and she had this most beautiful granny stitch top and I was like oh my god excuse me I had to grab her arm and say I love your top and she decided to freak me out because she said I knew you would and I was like what do you mean how would you know and she's like well you're hosting the granny stitch event when this happens to me it's quite a rare occurrence I'm I don't have the biggest community online we have our lovely little community and um Teresa I think her name was oh my god I'm making that up or is it Wendy no it's Teresa Teresa was is part of our community and I didn't know she was going to be there and it was the first time I'd met her but she knew that I'd love her top and I hope you can see it's in her uh, where her arm is it was basically a short sleeved round necked beautiful granny stitch top and I really really liked it they had very slight puff sleeves on them really quite a nice top and she'd made it using mini skeins just to, like a scrap top more like a scrappy yarn top so rather than wasting all these mini skeins she put them all together and made this beautiful top out of it and it looked absolutely stunning it was really eye-catching so had a lovely little chat to her and then ran on upstairs to deliver the first of the two workshops that I ran today I really enjoyed them because we know that granny's we do know that joining Granny Squares isn't always the most fun thing to do. You know how much I love working different and unique joins, including the zigzag join, which does feature in this workshop. It could be quite a challenge to understand some of these um, joins. The zigzag join is one of the easier ones, in my opinion. Um, and we do a couple of the basics. So we do the basic US single crochet join, and then we do the flat slip stitch seam. Is that the right word? Flat seam slip stitch join got a lot of words to it and trying to explain how to insert your hook is quite a challenge so at some point I'm going to be doing a full tutorial on how to complete the slip stitch join because when it's done right it is completely flat it's completely seamless and if you work it in the same colour as your outline on your squares it actually almost becomes an invisible seam and I really really like it as a, a seam I haven't used it in a project yet because I'm working on a bigger project that's got lots of squares no not lots of squares it's got 12 squares to join that's not 12 or 9 12 or 9 and I've been hinting at this for the last few videos um so that's I'm working out the join that we're going to use for our Christmas what was it called the jolly holiday blanket which is going to be starting on the 29th of September so I can't wait to preview that with you it's starting all the way back um in the end of September but the pre-sale is going to begin on the 15th of September so it's not that long for me to get it all finished off photographed and filmed and share with you see how my mind just switches on to the next thing already I've not even finished this weekend yet <sighs> so by this time tomorrow so today it's currently some Saturday evening Sunday night I'm going to be up in Scotland cannot wait now to get there to get out of this room and stay in a nice hotel and just take some time out and chill Today has been absolutely phenomenal. I am tired. My mascara is everywhere because when I get sweaty, it all ends up on the top of my lids and then it starts smudges underneath. I'm such a mess, hot mess, literally. Um, so I'm really excited to go to go away tomorrow and have a day off. Um, but I've got a whole other day to do more workshops with more wonderful people and I'm really excited. My nerves that I had most certainly dissipated almost as soon as I walked into the building. I just got on with it, you know? Um, even the nerves of the journey up here have all dissipated. I'm not even concerned about driving two and a half hours tomorrow night to get to Scotland. I'm still nervous about driving five and a half, six hours to get back. Now I know that if you're in the US, they sound like really small, minimal journeys, but in the UK, it's quite rare that we drive more than an hour unless we're going on holiday <laughs> because it's just not what we do we kind of live quite locally in our areas and everything's quite close together so to travel what considered quite huge distances most likely in traffic could be a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes and our roads aren't that safe but anywho we're gonna go tomorrow drive two and a half hours after we finish 
packing down from my workshops tomorrow at four and then I'm going to have a nice restful day in New Lanark at the mill. Obviously I'm rushing because I've got to go for my dinner. I've just arrived to this hotel room. I'm going to show you some more of this view. That's not the view you need to see. Just takes my breath every time. Can you see that? I just want you to be able to hear that water. That. That's the view from my hotel room. I've really spoiled myself with this little mini break. So. <laughs> Um, it's not great with the light behind me, is it? But just hearing that running water, I think I think I'm going to get quite a good night's sleep tonight after the last few days of hell in that um, hotel that I stayed in. I didn't have a very good room. I don't know if I let let you know that at all. But um, I'm going to go and get some food. By the time I get back, I imagine it will be really starting to get dark, so I won't be able to show you this view again. Oh, I wish I had more time here already, but gonna make the most of the time that I've got and go and get some food and chill out hopefully gonna have a wander around find out more about the history of this place because even though I've been here as a child it was a long long time ago so I don't really remember anything it certainly doesn't look how I remember and the receptionist said that the hotel opened in 1987 and I'm not convinced because I am sure it would have been around the time that I came with my family to New Lanark if I even told you that's where I've got to, I don't even know. I'm in Scotland. As you can tell, I'm very tired. Today went amazingly. It's not been forgotten. I will reflect on that later. But at the moment, I'm just enjoying this view. I'm going to share it with you a little bit more here so you can enjoy it as much as I can. God, it's so beautiful. Good morning. I've been up for a little while. <laughs> I've already had a little sneak outside. I've spent some time crocheting this morning. I'm classing this as a day off. I have already checked my emails. I've done all the absolute necessities for today. Got myself ready for the, I've got a featured pattern in the granny stitch event tomorrow. So that's all ready to go. All that's left to do today is to have a few hours walking around New Lanark Mill, finding out more about the history and understanding more about what um, Robert Owens did for the community of New Lanark. He was essentially the grandfather that inspired the cooperative societies that still run today um, in the UK and across the world. Um, and I'm just, just wanna chill a little bit. I've had some time this morning where I've sat in the windowsill watching the Clyde go by rumbling away because it's really quite a high water level today um, or yesterday as well um, and yeah I'm feeling very relaxed very chilled and I am taking this as a day off as I said because I don't really take a lot of time out as you can see I look very well rested but I'm hoping that I'll be more so but I do have quite a long journey to get home my inspiration for coming up here is I did come as a child and I want to remember well, I don't really remember a lot of the trip, actually. I've obviously been to Scotland quite a few times. My mum is Scottish um, and my uncle actually only lives about 25 miles from here. Um, I haven't told them I'm here. I'm just going to nip back home again. I'm only here for literally like 12 hours. Not quite true. 24 hours by the time I leave. It's going to be a six hour journey home. So I haven't included stops in that. And obviously I need stops. So it's going to be quite a journey home. So I'm going to try and cram in as much as I can before I go. It's about nine o'clock. I've got two hours before I've got to check out of this room, which is absolutely stunning. I slept like a baby, really comfortable bed. I'm absolutely convinced I have the best view in the whole hotel. I've shared that view with you. If you've been on my social media, I've been sharing that as much as I can because it's absolutely stunning. 
and literally spent a good hour this morning because I'm such an early riser, made a coffee, sat in the windowsill, crocheted as I watched the Clyde go by. And I do feel very, very relaxed. I'm gonna go for a very small walk. I won't call it a hike because that'll be insulting to people that hike. Um, there's a path that runs alongside the Clyde. There's a viewpoint I want to visit. I'm gonna try and do all of that before I need to check out. By that point, the visitor center should be open. I knew Scotland was beautiful, but on the drive up here, obviously I, I don't touch my phone when I drive, otherwise I would have shared everything with you. But to see the hills, the pine trees, the it's just absolutely breathtaking. And it's really lifted my spirit and I'm hoping all I need is just a few more hours and I'll be ready to carry on with my very packed remainder of the month and potentially year. I'm gonna go and get out there. The sun is shining. I can't believe that I'm in Scotland. It's raining in England, but it's dry here. I wanna make the most of it. I can be tired and sleep another day. You know, that's how I feel. I do have that long journey to do, so I'm not gonna do too much. I'm gonna go and have a wander along the Clyde, have a look at the falls, try and get to the viewpoint and share as much of it with you as I can. So I can't show you how amazing this is because the camera doesn't kind of see through the trees like our eyes do. Of course I'm out of breath, I'm really unfit. But behind me there is, what I can only assume is like a cut out from a glacier or something like that that would have sliced through this area. You know, it's all that kind of exciting history stuff, but it's just it's breathtaking and the fact that it's I've been walking up the hill so I'm quite literally out of breath anywho I'm gonna keep going because I think the viewpoint is that way I'm gonna go and try and grab you some images from up there it's I'll try and show you I just don't think it's gonna capture it as beautifully as it actually is does that make sense you're gonna have to come yourselves I think so I found a sneaky viewpoint up a bit of a hill so you can see. Let me show you properly. Yeah, this place isn't creepy in the slightest. Called the Hall of Mirrors. It has mirrors on the ceiling to allow people to view the falls. I keep wanting to say Vera Lynn, but that's not right. What are they called again? Cora Lynn. So that everybody could see the beauty of them. But I'm not feeling the most chilled. There's a massive like water tower thing I think associated with the hydro water thing and it literally makes me think of I'm not even gonna say the word a film with a clown in it so I am not necessarily taking a lazy way back but that ceiling there would have been covered in mirrors and that would have this window would have captured the beauty of the Clyde and the falls of the Coraline but I am getting out of here. I'm doing A, B, A. You can still hear the Coraline down there. I am heading back. I've had enough of being on my own in the wilderness, even though it's a path, walkway. Oh, there's a squirrel. Right, I'll see you in a minute. So there's the Coraline. There's the Coraline uh, Falls. I can't even tell you. Look, <laughs> they're not the stairs I just walked down. It was these stairs which go all the way up there. I am actually sweating. It's incredibly humid. There's loads of bugs, but it is beautiful. You can't see it well enough. I think I can make it darker. Oh, there we go. I've really had enough now. I'm going back to 
get a cup of coffee and to not talk myself into thinking about films with clowns in. And yeah, but I am literally sweating, so humid, there's bugs. I'm really pleased <laughs> I've seen what I've seen. I'm in no rush, I, there's more to see and I just can't, it's too warm. And I wanna go and have a look in the museum as well because I am already conscious of time, which I don't wanna be. I wanna relax and enjoy it, so yeah. Oh, I saw the, um, whatever that says, Bonington Pavilion, which is then the Hall of Mirrors. And yeah, but it, look how much I'm sweating. So yeah, I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'll be back. So after heading back down towards the mill, I then had the opportunity to head into the working elements of the mill and see the school that was established for the workers' children too. The mill is still a working mill where they're spinning yarn and various other fibres together to create beautiful British handmade wool. Sadly the mill itself wasn't actually running and spinning yarn that day, however I have seen that somewhere else so I wasn't too bothered. It was really interesting to learn or to notice that the motors that are running along the ceiling work not only the machine you'll see running in a moment but all the machines run from the same motor run by the water mill. The last machine that I'm going to show you is really interesting because it shows how they take the spun yarn and ply the different strands together. And I haven't seen this machine in action before, so it was really interesting to see it. You can see in the next few moments that there are some cones that run up and over and they head over to a different machine that are plying two or three strands together to create that finished wool or yarn that we use to make our projects. I also had the opportunity to visit what would have been a worker's house which was set in the 1930s and gave an insight into how they lived while they worked in the mill at the same time. It was really interesting to see the type of lifestyle they led but overall this weekend has been truly fascinating. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning more about um, my time at the North East Wool Festival. I know it's going to be back there next year so I hope to see you there and learning more about my little mini visit to the new Lanark Mill. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you come around with me as I headed out this weekend and I'm going to see you again in the next video.